Welcome to Sheffield, a city of contrasts. Even though it's an active industrial centre, Sheffield is the most wooded city in England. We're going to be using all our professional home finding skills to find a couple a new house. They're looking for a gentler life on the edge of the city. Georgie and Graham live in the centre of town and want to move, but what exactly are they looking for? A bigger house. Three bedrooms. Something that's unique. Something with a bit of character. Individualism. Makes you kind of go, wow. We don't really want the typical 1930s semi. So we want something different. Something that just grabs your attention straight away, I think. Basically something with more space, maybe a bigger garden, but still close to the Peak District so we can go walking, climbing, go spend some time outside. So you think you know Sheffield. It's the urban, gritty, northern industrial town, right? Well, forget it. Tonight we're proving that Sheffield is worthy of its title, the greenest city in England. A third of it sits in the scenic Peak District. Georgie and Graham want a better location and more space. Space for their prized possessions. This is my pride and joy, my new motorcycle. So we shouldn't rule out a bit of travelling, but on with the show and the burning issue, money. The crucial question, of course, is how much you're prepared to spend on it. A top limit, absolute max of 150. So their most important criteria are character and location. Ideally, they want to live in the southwest of Sheffield. It's the must-have postcode. Perfectly placed, close to both city and country. But its convenience makes it expensive. We're starting in a central location they like, that's a lot leafier than they're used to. It's a really stunning street, and the botanical garden's opposite. Yeah. Which it's got to be a big benefit. It has got four bedrooms and oozes traditional charm. It retains many of its original features, but this house is at the top of their budget at £149,950. That's a big bookcase. Wow. You're not buying That's the bookcase. That's a book lot of books. <laughs> if it's not staying, you don't want to fall in love with it. Yeah. The house was built in 1902 and it's got a wealth of period features. But I think of all of them, this fireplace is the most striking. Do you like it? No, no. <laughs> not really. Would it be really, really criminal to sort of do something with the tiles or would it just be better to...? You could take the whole thing out, you could take the, far, the tiles off and change them, you could take this off, you could change this. Mm. You can really do whatever you want. The only thing I would say is don't let your builder offer to take it away as a favour. Right. There's a big market for a reclamation mantelpieces right. and fire surrounds and you can make money out of it. The fireplace might have to go, but it looks like the bath can stay. Oh! Wow, that is fantastic. That's marvellous. I love that. This room impresses them, but the rest of the house needs a bit of updating, and sadly, those period features aren't charming Georgie and Graham. No. <laughs> Definitely got to go. There isn't much point in paying for features that you're going to take out. We've got to work out exactly what they mean by character. Ten minutes further from the town centre, our second house is in tree-lined Eccleville, yes. one of Sheffield's most desirable addresses. I like the fact all the houses are different here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this Victorian semi has the three bedrooms thereafter and potential to be modernised. It's well under budget, just shy of £125,000. Now, it's been lived in by a single guy, this house, and I think you'll think that the kitchen needs a bit of work. Yeah. It's a sort of homage to the 70s. Something a bit different. That's actually quite nice, actually. It's nice and bright and cheerful. <laughs> Isn't that spectacular? That's gorgeous, yeah. It's fantastic. For some, a perfect 70s kitchen and bathroom is a big plus and Aladdin's cave of kitsch, but perhaps this period's not right for them either. It's just, I know, so in your face. I actually think it's so dated that if English Heritage were allowed in here, they'd list it. Mm -hmm. When people do extend into the attic space, they should apply for building regulations approval once they've done the work. There's something else to look at here, Graham. The floor joists. Right. Now, this room was built as an attic room, a storage room. Mm -hmm. It wasn't built to, to take the weight of furniture from people living up here every day. Right. I would be asking a surveyor to look very carefully at those floor joists and see if they've been strengthened enough. 
could you purchase something which required a new bathroom and could you face doing that much work, budget um, allowing? Probably not, because this would need all taking out and starting again, no. really. I mean, actually, simply replacing a bathroom suite and retiling isn't that expensive. It's True. if you have to shift the plumbing that it starts to cost. Up in the attic, Graham spotted an unusual feature. I can just about see my mother-in-law up the road. Oh, so. really? <laughs> Nearly. Is that a bit close for comfort? Just a bit, yeah. It's uh, about 100 yards. Oh dear. So what does Georgie think? I don't think it's really the house for us. A big sigh of relief there then. I agree, unfortunately. Got the keys, right though. area, wrong street. But how are we to know about Georgie's mum? What we do know now is that they're not that keen on DIY. Well, we don't think they'll have to do any in our next property. We're heading to one of their favourite areas, the leafy and wooded suburb of Totley. It's green, yet it's just 15 minutes to the city centre, the best of both worlds. Now, this house was built in 1977, but it's got quite a few hidden surprises. Garage, that's a good one. Yeah. Ga yeah, you see, familiar. they're always positive. What yeah. is the right attitude? <laughs> a modern build, it's on at just under £150,000. It's light and airy, but the layout's unusual. It's on three storeys, but you have to go downstairs to the bedrooms. It's a sort of upside-down house. Not really an issue, as there's plenty of space inside, and it oozes al fresco appeal. I like it. Really, really see me with a glass of wine. <laughs> this is the garden, right. and then the garden's attached to a, another council-owned wood. Yeah. So right. you're never going to have building in front of you. I may never see the cat again. <laughs> <laughs> So they'll always have a great view, but it's modern their thing. We're looking for character in a house, and this is not alluded to from the front. Now down here is really the master bedroom. Wow. It's huge. It's a good size again. I think it's just a bit unique. I mean, I don't really know anyone who lives in a house that's kind of upside down. In my view, one of the most special things is being able to walk out onto a balcony from your sitting room and into the garden yeah. from your bedroom. I'm going to come down and explore. All right. Careful, it's quite a step. There may be a wood at the bottom of the garden, but where exactly does the plot end? The boundaries are not defined. The woods at the bottom are public land. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Anyone can have access down there. Yeah. It brings into my mind a security point of view, because right. if this is public land, anyone's got access to it. There's no fence. There is nothing stopping someone you walking straight up to your bedroom, bedroom door, oh, basically. True. Georgie and Graham could put up a barrier to improve security, but only on their own land. They would need to check the title deeds to the property to see where the boundary is. Surroundings aside, are they sold on the house? It wouldn't have been the first choice of house I would have come to see. Marks out of ten. Eight. Five. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Big difference. In yeah, okay. it's nice, but I don't know. It feels like it's lacking something, but I don't know what. Well, this is confusing. We're getting the locations right, but what they call character is still not clear. We've shown them properties from different eras, yet old or new, something's wrong with every one. Property 4, on at 145,000, has a bit of everything. It's old, but it's been modernised. It's rural, yet near town. I wonder if it could be the answer. I love that. I absolutely love Belfast. Belfast Saints, yeah. I know. I'm a real fast too. <laughs> I, I rather like the fact that they've put this oven and stove into the original chimney brush. Yes, yeah. yeah. Kept the original feature, and yet we've got a really modern contemporary kitchen. Yeah. Tiles are absolutely gorgeous. So, through this door is the stairs. It's a proper enclosed cottage staircase. But if you come up here, and this is the master bedroom, wow. which is a lovely big room. Great cupboard space. Yes, even I could fit my clothes. I think you could. <laughs> and there's an added bonus. What's behind that door? Ah. Uh -huh, an ensuite shower room. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? That's that really nice. very nice. Yeah. If you want to know whether a shower is properly pumped, yeah. you turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay. Have I turned the wrong bit? This will help you assess the water pressure and its temperature. Uh, okay, so the shower is not pumped. And here, believe it or not, 
This living room was an addition. This was put on in the 70s. All right. But for a 70s extension, it's actually been done extremely well. Yeah, it's very nice indeed. It's lovely. I like it. But the exterior needs looking at. What we've got here are a number of cracks in this wall. A more obvious one here running from the window. There are several possible causes, weather erosion, settlement, or the more serious subsidence. Some properties are more vulnerable to this than others. And it often occurs where ground is sloping away, or there's water, or there's extensions. Now that doesn't mean it has to be a deal breaker, but it is advisable to get the professional opinion of a surveyor before making an offer. So there are points to consider, but all in all, is it a thumbs up? It's definitely or? thumbs up. Oh, yeah. great. Well, four houses and one strong contender, at last. Our hunch was right. They want the charm of history and the convenience of contemporary, all under the one roof.